I'm planning to do some fishing today down in this creek. And where's this creek, you may ask? It's way down there. That's the Tennessee River. And the creek's about right, I don't know, coming in right around there somewhere. That's right, it's a creek that runs into the Tennessee River and even more specifically, the uh, Chickamauga Lake part of the Tennessee River. And it doesn't flow vertical like a lot of the streams that come off the plateau. Oh man, it's like a horse fly. I got that one though. It doesn't flow vertical down. Um, it flows horizontal, like in the channel. So that's why I wanted to explore it. And I fish part of it and catch a lot of fish, That the part that's closer to the lake. I've never been this far up and uh, it looks really interesting and we're gonna start fishing. We got a fish already and it's just a shiner. There's a few different species of shiners and I'm not sure, I can't tell apart very well. Put out the shiner. Man, they are hammering it. Next cast. It's a small one, but it is a red breast. Look at the little girl. They hit it so aggressively, they're just going to hook themselves. Oh, oh, I had that one. That was three in a row, but lost it. it. Looked a little bit better size. Getting a lot of hits in there. There it is. That is a little better size. What was that? A good, healthy red breast. Nice size one. Looks like it's doing good in here. Nope. Oh, all righty. Let's see what all we can catch. So we're gonna just keep waiting. And some of these little holes, I could probably cast in, cast in, and catch a lot of fish. Where sometimes I just want to catch a few of the bigger ones and then move on to the next hole. But this is gonna be a whole new, interesting every around every little turn and bend like this one up here. I do not know what, what to expect really. Wow, because a bend like that looks, wow, that's cool, that's a lot of water. So I don't wanna, I'm kind of approaching, oh, I already saw something swim up in there. I'm approaching from downstream, make a cast into it and expect to get hit right away. Got something hit. It may not be as deep as I'm, I think it is, let's see. Come on. Well, I thought I would have. Oh, there it is. Gotcha. All right, it's a little guy. Sometimes the bigger holes don't uh, necessarily mean bigger fish. And red breast, probably the most common sunfish gonna be in here. I'm using a little Bobby Garland in baby bass color. We got, uh, I think it's a one, ooh, what's that? Oh, that feels good. What is that? We got a 120th ounce jig head and a little rock bass. Ah, that's cool. I'm glad to catch that. That means, usually if there's rock bass, that means there could be bigger fish. Like I don't catch a lot of rock bass out of just the tiny, tiny creeks. Pretty fish there. Four pound mono, six foot ultralight tfo rod a 1000 size shimano sahara and i have oh missed it come on and i have jumped this reel around on several different rods i kind of moved it around because i really like it for an ultralight reel it feels great especially that four pound line sometimes i'll put it on like a light rod sometimes ultralight i've got several ultralights so i go back and forth sometimes and I'm excited to fish this creek and we're gonna see if we can do it without 
cutting anything out. We'll see how many, uh, what all we come across. Oh, what was that? I saw something go through there. There's a... Now, I've never fished this part of the creek. I've been kind of looking at it, and I found an access. There's some sunfish right there. Yeah, I imagine it's really small. Um, but downstream, probably two to three miles, I'd say, I catch a lot of nice largemouth. So the largemouth kind of go up in the, this creek out of the river, out of the Tennessee River. And, um, but I don't know if there's gonna be bass up in here. It'd be really cool to see if I catch any, any kind of bass. Now, there should be some little ones, but it'll be really neat to catch anything. Oh, oh, there's a bunch of sunfish right there. Got it that time. They were hitting at it, hitting at it. Sometimes those bigger ones will just smack it. Like, I, I cast in there seven times probably, and now he, he hooked into it. Oh, I got a sneeze. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to cut anything out unless I have to sneeze or something like I just did. Get there. That's a prettier red breast. It's got some good colors on it. Look at that mouth. These guys, they just think they're the king in these creeks. And they pretty much are. They eat whatever they want to eat. Very aggressive. So. so far, the rock formation is really cool in this creek. And a lot of times the lower parts of creeks that hold a lot of fish or like this, like I said, this one in the lower part holds a lot of fish. And like every summer I can go and catch some like 12 to 16 inch bass out of it. But I've never fished up it and it usually turns out that if there's a good amount of fish in like you know a lower section or one section it's because the whole creek is just like a, usually a really good creek and this and it's got some really cool rock i've only seen one other creek and it's a creek that i fish a lot that looks like this it's kind of neat that this is very it's so similar what's that shiner got himself hooked somehow But we got rocks, really cool rock formations. We got some gravel. It's getting really skinny. And uh, it seems like it's getting skinnier and skinnier, but I feel like at any turn there could be like a deep hole. And uh, our goal is to kind of go up it. Look at this flow though. They got, it's a pretty good amount of flow. So wherever this creek's coming from, spring or something, it's got some it's got a decent amount of volume of water flowing through it. Just have to keep working our way up here. Anything I can, any hole that I've seen is just big enough to cast in has uh, had fish in it. Oh, what is that? A shiner? It is a shiner. Alrighty, I ate, ate that one. Pretty good. Yeah, there. This part's pretty shallow though. Even a shallow creek like this with some good flow to it, a lot of overhang, the creek's gonna stay cool. A lot of bugs are gonna fall out of these trees. Um, a lot of rocks and gravel. So it's just, even if there's not that much water, there's so much food in here for these fish. Let's see if I can get a cast up into that little. I don't wanna catch just shiners. Oh, oh, I just spooked off a couple of fish. I think they were a little bass. Oh, I 
Maybe I'll see Bugs. Oh, there's a little bin coming up here. just trying to cast ahead of you even I can't really tell if that's deep or or anything but just in case there's a little hole there just cast up but I always keep moving when I'm doing a basically when I'm always when I'm waiting but especially a little quicker like this just gonna keep moving keep moving keep casting wow this was a nice little deep hole I don't know how I didn't catch anything out of there I mean, I gave enough time. Got some little bites. Oh, I see something coming. Eat it. Oh, we got more coming. Whole bunch of little fish coming over. Look at it. Oh, what is that bird? I have no idea what kind of bird that is. Just flew up in the tree over there. I guess it was. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's what we're looking for. I saw that one come, ate it, and I knew exactly what he was. Look at that little large mouth. Look how fat this thing is. My goodness. No wonder the, I bet you there's like tons of these little guys up here just getting big, getting big and getting big, waiting for that chance to move downstream. Look at that gut. What a beauty. That is a nice bass. If I catch this on the lake, am I excited? Yeah, probably, but not that much. Catch it out of a foot of water, and it's way more exciting than All right, that was what we, that was one of the, oh, oh, oh. Dude, what's that right there? Hold on, what, what is it? I see another bass, looks like. It looks different though. There was, I don't know what that fish right there was. There was another fish. I don't, I actually don't know what it was. He was, he looked curious to wonder like what I was uh, throwing. There's another one. And what is that? Uh, red breast, just a longer red breast. Sometimes they're rounder, sometimes they get longer. Man, I, dude, I don't even know how long I've been here. Let's look real quick. I turned my camera on 20 minutes ago, but I was loading up the kayak. Oh, there's something right there. I'll see something. Hold on, I'm about to try to catch this fish I see. Oh, he swam away from it. Oh, something hit it. I was gonna say, this creek's been amazing so far. Oh, gotcha. And this little hole right here is not that big of a hole, but it's, it's got a lot of fish in it. And these are like better ones. Like That's a little green, uh, bluegill, but still decent size one. A lot of times in these little streams, there's just like, you know, one inch ones and stuff, but we already caught a large, large mouth out of here, a red breast and a bluegill out of the same hole. And I see fish following this thing. Ooh, there he is. Oh man. <laughs> he came and smoked it another little large mouth he's a little bit bigger i think yeah this one is another healthy large one bigger than the last one that may have been the one i was seeing look at that dude that's cool that's kind of you want for your fish tank to just he's already growing good and he's hungry he's gonna eat a lot he's gonna grow fast well, this little uh, lure I put on seems to be just right. 
The jig head, I think, is a little heavy. I probably could get away with a little bit lighter one. But I just kind of grabbed a couple out of my bag. What's that? Little fish. I uh, could have went with a smaller, which I, I have a little bit smaller one, a little smaller lure. I don't know if I, I think I do. But I thought I was going to run into some decent sized fish, like some suckers. There's some hog suckers swimming around. Like the bass we've caught, the red breast, the uh, shiners, they're all got a big enough mouth to eat this lure. No problem. That was a nice little hole there. Be curious as we walk another, I don't even know, 100 yards maybe before we turn back, if we come across another hole that, that big. There'll be holes with fish in them, but that one you could tell was a little bit bigger. Had the cup, had, um, what is that noise? Had at least two bass in it, which in those kind of holes could have several. There's a little fish in that hole. Bunch of little ones in there. Oh. <laughs> Uh, a little opening right here. Looks shallow, but you always got to cast into it. Just don't know what's in there. Oh, this is cool. We might have a decent little hole right here. Oh, oh, got hit right there. Little squirrel going across that log up there. Oh, there's some, oh, cutting a tree. I saw a bunch of fish coming to look at my lure. Oh, got it. Ooh, what is that? I saw a big flash of red. He turned his belly up when he came, turned. It's a nice red breast. It's amazing how bright that is. Like, you know, you just don't think of a fish in a creek, just in a regular creek, it has a big old red belly like that. And these these red breasts are all through the the uh, east of wherever you call it, east of America, from uh, especially down south. But they also are all up north too. So. They're on the east side of Tennessee and all over the east coast, like all the way to the east. But what's funny is like in the middle Tennessee, they they really don't have red breast or maybe a few, something there. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, a little bass. Oh man, the, the largemouth population in this little creek is good. Of course, largemouth are pretty much everywhere ubiquitous as they say so you get like way north oh i just stepped in a hole there it'd be weird um i never fished any streams way up north we gotta get across this log jam but uh like say you know obviously like alaska they don't have largemouth bass uh and like places like in you know up in canada uh they don't have them and I don't think they have a, uh, I don't know what sunfish in there. Obviously Canada's huge. But it is, whoa. it is cool to see which areas. Yeah, we gotta keep going. I'll try to get over this and we'll, ah, we'll break this thing though. All right, let's not get stabbed by a, limb this is neat to see which areas have which species and uh like i was saying about middle tennessee they are the most of the sunfish in there are predominantly long year 
and you can catch them like crazy. Although they have kind of a they have a smaller mouth than red breast do. So you most of the time you got to downsize a little bit if you're gonna catch a lot of them. But like we could catch it. They're technically can be long ear in this stream and like a lot of the streams around me, but there's you hardly catch them. Like why I mean this is part of the Tennessee River. They're native to the Tennessee River. But why are they not in this stream? And why are redbreast not over there? When it's, it, they connect to the same waters, what keeps them from moving from like one area to the other? And oh, a turtle down there. And to really get to know what's in the place, I love fishing the creeks because the creeks are going to have all the baby fish and all the little things. And a turtle down there, like different turtles, different snakes. What you doing down there, buddy? He's, I don't think he's used to people coming and bothering him. <laughs> he's like, what is going on? He's just sitting down there, not even moving. Oh, just got, oh got that one. A little red breast. Let's get it in front of this turtle, see what happens. See if he tries to eat or something. I've got it in front of this turtle. There's a bunch of different sunfish kind of coming up to look at it. Yeah, he wasn't even worried about it. Wow, look at the red tips on his fins. Alrighty. Oh, half the time the little these little fish take off with this thing, and I barely even feel them. I don't want to keep moving, just move for a little while. There's definitely shiners, I see shiners and little fish. What else would I catch in here? I haven't caught a green sunfish yet. Maybe a spotted bass, possibly a smallmouth. See, that's another thing. Like, this is the smallmouth bass range. But a lot of the creeks that I fish, you're, you don't have them. But as soon as you go north from here, uh, within 50 miles, probably less than that, you get to predominantly smallmouth streams. Like this one is definitely a largemouth stream. I'm, I'm kind of surprised we've caught this many largemouths. It's pretty cool though. The nursery is full. We got plenty of big bass coming. They're in here eating. Hey, look at the rock ledges on this thing. It makes it look kind of deep right there. Let's see. Oh, missed that. Did I miss that one? All right. Checked it. Got something pretty ferocious, but he can't get hooked. Oh, phone's going off. Don't mind it. Oh, oh yeah, another large mouth. Well, let me get my phone out so we can take a little picture of this guy and release and answer it real quick. Beepy, beepy little large mouth.
All right, we're folks, we're back. Had a little intermission there. Went ahead and grabbed another Bobby Garland just to replace it. And this is actually a different color. I think it's called Baby Shad. It's basically the same. It's really close to the same color, but the other one was a little, getting a little loose. And um, I saw, while I was on the phone, I saw some fish swimming around right. Oh, missed them. Right there. I don't know what they were. It could have been shiners. They look decent size. There's a lot of them right there. Yeah, I think they're shiners. There's a lot of them biting at it. So this little, this little stretch is pretty deep right here. Oh, there's something down there. Eat it. There's a bunch of them down there. It's funny. I get this. I wish you could see everything and I know some people have suggested polarized lens. I just don't, I've tried that before. It didn't really work, but I, I get to see all this like action just looking around. I can't even show you if I put it, I could do a head mount. I've never done a head mount. I just, I think I would miss all the bites because I'm always looking around and sometimes I'm looking at the bite. Sometimes I'm like looking away when I get in bites and stuff and it probably make you go dizzy, but it's kind of cool. I'm looking at all the rock ledges and this is like a, just a super narrow, deep little rock channel here. And then up there looks pretty good. It looks like, it looks like the creek changes up there. It makes a sharp turn. So I love when the creeks make a change and a turn because that's usually a, you find a deep hole or you find something different. Sometimes where the big ones are, the big ones for that area. And sometimes it's just like the creek changes to a different structure or something. Oh, this is looking good. Let's get some casts over here. Boom. Holy cow, I got hammered. What is that? Is that a, oh, that's a largemouth. Dude, that's a nice little largemouth. We're getting bigger ones as we get upstream. He hammered that. This is a really good fishing stream. Get out of there. Well, look at, look at how big these guys are. Just like, like tall for a six inch, seven inch bass. All right. Yep, there was a little bin here. That's where my biggest one's been so far. There's a uh, they were under that. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, another one. <laughs> These guys are fighting. Oh, this is crazy. Look at the dude, that is so pretty. That is like just a perfect, healthy bass. Probably never been caught before. I mean, I doubt he's been caught before. Just a good body on him. Hopefully he just keeps on growing. Man, that's nice. Yep, that was two right there. It's like a little log. Some logs light right there. Man, that was cool. That was worth coming up there right here. I bet you there's another one in here. How is there nothing in that little hole? That looked perfect. Oh, oh, there he is. What is that? Oh, shiner. That's a pretty good size shiner. Oh, the shiners are so slimy. Oh, oh, come on, come on. Feel that guy kind of working it. Red breast. So this is there that bend is. We got a where it comes in and like makes a 90 down this way to go with the rocks. But we got some, you know, washed out water. Got or a channel. Got some deep water right there. Those bass were over here in this calm side. And under those like 
uh, limbs coming in then it gets pretty deep right there and then there's a little drop off right there oh Ooh. thought I had that one Sometimes you got too, a lot of water. You don't have as many fish, but you'll have bigger fish. And that seems to be the case in this hole. We got a couple of nice largemouth that are eating, but I don't see as many little fish swimming around because they're they either ran it off or they're eating it. Oh, oh, that hole right there has some fish in it though. Those are nice sunfish. Calm down. I think I saw another one right down in there. Oh. One more chance. One more chance, everybody. We're going to be moving on if we can. Not sure what this creek is doing. It looks pretty grown up right here. Huh. All right, well, let's try back over here. Some deep little stretches. Oh, ah, it's that guy. I see something in there. These little rock ledges are we really do. All right, we gotta make a decision here. I don't wanna come up here and step on a snake or something. I don't want to walk through too much, but we got a log jam, but we might be able to get around it. Let's go up and take a look. This is really cool. Uh, look at this, like, look at all this big old rock. It's like all this rock right here. And then it just drops off. There's like a three foot deep hole right there. Hmm, it's interesting. I'm gonna try to find a step. All right, get up there. Well, it's tangled. There we go. Uh, it looks like, look at all that bait fish right there. Those, what are those? Are those um, shiners or chubs? Not sure. Yeah, it looks like there's some nice little holes right here. Oh, I think I see a guy looking at us. Hold on, let's see if we can get a cast up under there. Something came out. What was that? Oh, there he is. Get out of there. Get out of there. <laughs> oh, no, he's caught me on a tree. Get, how in the world? He's got me hooked on a tree, but I got him with a large mouth. Let's see if he stays hooked. Oh, there he is. All right, we got him out of there. Nice large man. man, they just keep on coming out of here. You think there's like you're getting to the like further up the creek where there may not be as many fish, but if this guy is living in here, there's a lot of food in here. There's probably a bunch underneath these little overhangs, but I, it's gonna be kind of hard to get any casts in. See, something just comes out. Oh, oh, did I have something? Nope. So we know there's some fish under there. Let's see if we can. Oh, let's make some. Oh, okay. There's a little hole right over here. Let's make a cast into that before we go into it. We got some little fish in there biting. Oh, I see something. What is that? Oh, we got hammered, but I missed it. I think it was a little largemouth. Let's try that again. Oh, that was a red breast. Got him.
man looks snaky don't it i usually ain't too worried about that but i saw a copperhead the other day and i'm all nervous like i need to get if i can get further maybe i can walk this log I just can't see what's around that corner i gotta i gotta see what's around that corner i can't stop without without knowing so we got this log jam here we've got a big tree that i'm standing on i think i can walk it kind of stay off the edge maybe not have to get into that bunch of debris there out of the way you're just in the way limb why you gotta what's this limb gonna be here ouch ouch ow ow there we go we past that part now we got all these leaves I can't see through. See through. Should have brought my machete. I used it earlier today. And uh, let's left it back in the truck. Oh, whoa. That lost my fishing ball. Get off there. Well, I'm looking up the creek and it looks like more log jams. I don't see any pools. So I'm glad I didn't see one or I have to go to it. That satisfies my curiosity for, for now anyways. Thanks for watching. And if you liked this video, if you're still watching now, you probably should subscribe. And not just to this channel, subscribe to my other channel. And uh, cause I got a lot more uncut fishing videos, some longer stuff. And I don't do a lot of uncut stuff on my main channel, but this video went, there was no editing needed. I was like, uh, just, I was like, maybe I can go through and make a whole video and just not cut anything. And uh, it was very easy, a lot of fish. Uh, this, this place is uh, just really neat. It's a really interesting stream. I just like every stream, everyone's a little different every section is a little different you know so i think it's all neat i do a lot of kayaking of course and bass fishing and some maybe some other style of fishing but this right here is like it always comes back to this i just find this so fascinating uh all the little things that are in here and all you can everything you can catch with a little ultralight rod so thanks for watching Here we are back at this creek. The last time I fished this creek, um, I just did, I can't remember what I used. I think I used my light rod with like some braid to like a four pound leader, throwing some small lures. I ended up catching nine species of fish, not even really trying to catch a lot of species, just trying to fish in it and just trying to catch whatever. And I saw more species that I thought I could have catch. Today, I, my goal was to catch more than 10 species. And I, I know it can be done. I don't know if all those fish are still in here. That was more than a month ago. Some of these creeks change. I got some real small lures. We're gonna use like tiny ultralight lures, two pound line, ultralight rod. And um, the goal is to catch as many species as possible. I'm probably only gonna fish maybe an hour, two hours. So I'm gonna get right into it. And usually the species count starts getting getting up pretty quick as soon as you get fishing. 164 ounce jig head with a little mule fishing minnow to start out. Okay, all right. I actually just put this line on here. Oh, and I see some fish on first cast. I just put this line on here, so I want to see how it casts. It's two pound. Okay, there's the first one, and we will just take a picture of them in order as we catch them. I want to get a whole uh, 10 species pictured. That's a little bluegill. There's probably a ton of these in here. But if this little guy can eat it, I know I can get a ton of fish. Species number one. Oh, 
fish on, fish on. Okay. Second catch is uh eh, second species. A little bit bigger bluegill. Alrighty. Oh, oh, there's something. What do we got? All right, are you different? No, where's it's all blue right now. Come on, where are the other ones at? Oh, fish on, fish on. And yes, species number two. Red breast sunfish. We're, going, we're on our way up to this hole up here. I think I'm hoping we'll have a lot of fish in it. Two down, pretty fast. This is a uh, red breast, just a little one. Fish on, fish on. And another red breast. So back to back red breast. See some fish looking at it. Man, the water's super clear and it's like real shallow. Got it. I was in a tree, let it dangle in the water and I got a fish to come get it. And another red breast. Oh, fish. And yeah, it's a shiner. Sometimes they're tough in here. Most of the time they're really easy to get. But there's a, I think it's a common shiner. I'm not, I don't know my shiners very well, but I don't think there's very many different species of shiner in here. So it's either striped shiner or common shiner. I'm pretty sure, but that's three, three species down. Oh, whoa, whoa, I saw that fish come hit it and I jerked too soon. They were eat. oh, they're eating some bugs. Oh, look at them. There's bugs that are falling out of the tree or something, I think. And they're uh, coming out under that, from under that, like under brush. And um, coming out and eating them. God, what is that, what is that? Yes, yes. This is one of the fish that I caught last time in here. I didn't really know there was many of them in here. It's a stump knocker or um, spotted sunfish, I believe is the real term for it, or at least a Tennessee term, but he is dark and living underneath that overhang there. That's a really cool looking fish. Those, that's a cool fish. That would be something to kind of cool to come down and get because they're not in a lot of creeks I catch. Be cool for a fish tank, something a little different, I think. I bet they'd live in a fish tank good. Four species down. We're doing good. Dude, there's some bass right there. I can't get them to bite. I may have to, if I, if I um, get all the other species to get the bass, I may have to go with a little bit bigger lure. There's some, there's a, there's definitely some large mouth. I know there's large mouth and spots and some other stuff in here that are a little bit bigger fish. Got that one, got that fish, whatever it is. What is that? That's a big old stump knocker. Well, not a giant, but a big one for here compared to that last one. Big spotted sunfish. Oh, goodness. Oh, the stump knock. Them things are strong. Man, there's a lot more of these in here than I thought. They all like, they're like a beefy or beefy fish. There we go. What's 
set. And another st another uh, spotted sunfish. I can't believe there's this many. Okay, that hole right there is gonna have a lot of different fish. If I count, don't spook them off. Oh, oh, they were coming at it. I don't know what those were. What is that thing? Oh, that was a good fish. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Eat it, eat it. Oh, dude, what are those? They're like nibbling at it. Got one. There's a nice bass in there. What is that? That's a bluegill. There's some big something in there. What are those fish in there? All right, well, I wasn't planning on doing this, but I'm going to change lures to fish this hole before I move through because there's... There's definitely largemouth in there. There may be some other ones. I can't get them to bite this little minnow. This horsefly isn't much bigger, but it's a little bit more profile and a little more creature style where I think they might eat it. Oh, that was cool. Dude, that little fish nailed a bug off the top of the water. But 10 inch largemouth right in front of me. Look at this guy coming to check out what's going on. He don't even know I'm here. He's just like, what is going on here? There's several largemouth like this in this hole. Look at all those fish. There's a lot of fish in here. I couldn't get very many bites really, but they were ready to hit those, if I had a topwater lure or something, they were ready to hit something off the top. That's a red ear right there. I think that's a red ear. I need that one. He's right in front of me. That's that's one of the ones I couldn't get to bite. Yeah, yeah. I got one to finally bite. Stay on there, stay on there. I twist it right in front of his face. I need a largemouth. Come on, come on in. I need my fifth species. Yes, sir. Look at this creek fish. This is one of the smaller ones that were out there. There's there's probably a dozen fish this size or bigger. And he's fat. He, they really didn't want to hit nothing. They are living good in here. But that's species number five. Okay, there's a, there's a red ear. He's back in front of me. I gotta get one of these red red ear out of here too, but we'll probably move right now and come back through here. I barely hooked this guy. Gather. Just a 10 inch large mouth, but good quality. What's back here? There's one. What is that? Oh, it's a, I think it's another large mouth. This, this, uh, this really changed. This stream has really changed. There's a drum down there. Okay, hold on, let's get this guy. I can't believe how low it is. I've never fished it this low and clear. And like the, the, the channel is kind of washed around. Goodness, he's fat. <laughs> oh, fat large man. I didn't want to bring worms, but now I'm kind of wishing I had worms because I think I could get a few more of these fish to bite. I mean, they eat stuff. Oh, he's looking at it. Oh, he came right up to it. Eat it. Oh my goodness. He, he came right up to it and wouldn't eat it. That would have been a cool catch. He's a, like a 10, 11 inch drum. There's a fish. Oh, yes, long ear. Boom, we just added another species. I forgot about the long ear sunfish in here. He's um, one of the most colorful, well, he's a little pale looking. So we got long ear, let's get him back in there. Red breast, stump knocker, 
long ear, bluegill, largemouth bass, shiner, I forgot the shiner, six, six species. What's that? What's that? Be something different. It's fighting hard. It's a yes, yes, it is. I can't believe it. We've actually got the red ear I've been looking for. I gotta get a picture of him. Hold on there. Hold on there, buddy. Species number seven. Yeah. Oh, where's the fish? It's good fighting one. Get over there. Wow, it's a pretty red breast. That's the more regular colorful ones. There we go. Hey, I got a fish. What is that? What is it? Nice spotted sunfish. Oh, that's a good fish. What is that? He is fighting hard. Oh, red breast. Red breast with a gash taken out of him. I love it when they just come up and hammer it. Wouldn't mind catching some more red ear. I don't, I don't catch those a lot of the creeks. And they're very picky, seems like. Like, I saw some schools of them. I couldn't get any of them to bite. I need a green sunfish to show up. That's something I should be able to catch. Oh, come on, there's gotta be some. Oh, oh yeah, that's a big sunfish, whatever it is. It feels like it. Let me get over here. Look at that deep spot. <laughs> that's nice, what a catch. That's. That is awesome. <laughs> Look at the size of that guy. He's just built different. Just, that's a cool fish. Big red breast. Hiding in a little deep hole under that tree. What in the world? What? Was that a great sunfish? I think it was tiny. Stop knocker. Wait, wait, no. <gasps> green sunfish. Yes, we got the green sunfish. Dude, that's so cool. That is like, <laughs> that fish is so cool looking. Look at the mouth on that tiny guy. They look similar to a stump knocker at first glance. But their mouths are different and they're just they got some different colors to them okay thank you oh what is that and another green sunfish it's so funny how these fish are like i'll get one species through one section another through another section then another it's like it's just kind of they all It'll be three or four of these fish in a row, three or four of these fish in a row. I've got eight species and I, I was hoping to get the 10, but I am going to turn around and start going back up, um, go back up through where I came. I saw other species in there, just couldn't get those to bite. I think I'm gonna try something different, but I use the, the mule fishing 164 ounce jig head. It's a great size for, I mean, I was catching tiny little fish off of it and um, the, the mule little minnow and then the horse fly was the main thing I used and or the second thing i use and actually caught a lot of little ones too it's a good profile but it folds up and i didn't have to change them they don't tear up so mule fishing makes great multi-species lures that's still i went an hour and a half fished a creek about a maybe a half mile stretch if that and caught eight species of fish 
that's that's pretty diverse uh, for a stream, especially you know in Tennessee, uh, as far as catching fish on lures. Now you might be able to catch a bunch other ways. Usually it's a little harder, or maybe not harder with one. I could have caught maybe more with worms, maybe less. Maybe some of them fish wouldn't have hit a worm. But either, anyways, this is a fun time, and I'm just using a Cast King uh, Resolute Ultralight. I think it's a is it six foot six foot Ultralight rod. This is a Luz uh, Wally Marshall 100 size. Both of these things were sent to me. The Luz one was sent a long time ago. I've never used it. I put some two pound mono on it. This rod and real combo, it's, it's a pretty basic, nothing like real high end. I would like to get some little bit higher end ultralight stuff. I was able to throw the 164th ounce uh, lure pretty far out there. And if you're having trouble casting those lighter lures, you know, go with lighter line. Two pound line is pretty strong. Like. You can catch a lot of fish, if you're, especially if you're a multi-species in a creek. Uh, four pound line, I, ca I use it a lot too. But maybe your rod's not got enough flex to it. Make sure you're using, maybe get an ultralight rod. So you need that rod tip to bend to fling those light lures out there. And um, if, so if you're having trouble, you know, casting it out there. Also, you gotta look, look ahead of yourself when you're fishing to see where the holes are. Make casts before you get up to those holes to spook those fish off, especially when it's shallow. This, the day, today the fish were seeing me really well. I was having to make really far casts to be able to uh, to get a lot of them before um, before they got spooked off. Hey, thanks for watching. That was a cool little trip out here. I love getting out here. And as you can see, I'm in shorts in the creek and here pretty soon, I won't be able to do this. It'll get cold. As soon as it gets cold, these kind of small streams, all the fish go hide somewhere. Uh, these little deep pools and they're not active. so trying to get all these in as uh, as fall is coming on get as many of these little fishing trips in as i can thanks for the support welcome to the channel everybody i'm out doing some exploring in a creek i've been to uh probably two or three times and i've always caught a lot of fish it's always really clear it goes through town. There's a lot of vehicles and a lot of trash gets washed in from uh, businesses and roads and stuff. But it's amazing how good the fishing can be in here. And today, I have changed up a lot of stuff. I kind of went really lightweight, and that's the theme of my video, uh, kind of this fishing video. I'm testing out several things now. I went by Academy and got one of the Magellan bags. I've had these bags for years, and my old one is wore out. It's like it's time for a new one. These are like 30 bucks. And they're so small that you can't put too much stuff in there. Uh, I got, you know, like my phone and wallet and, you know, one bat, one little box, a few different lures, a couple of lightweight, uh, some grippers and pliers. This creek has a lot of panfish, but has some, has some decent, can have some decent bass. Has a lot of small bass, some decent bass, some like some three inch swim baits, some little Bobby Garland lures, um, some little crawls. Also, probably planning to put on maybe a Helgramite, but like that three inch and undersized lure, that way I can catch a bunch of fish. And also, the biggest change today is what I just bought. I've been really wanting to work out what is the best like exploration rod that I can come up with that I can throw down to crappie lures up to bass lures like the Helgramite. So, Bobby Garland little crappie lures to a three inch swim bait or a three inch Helgramite and kind of target all the fish in those areas, switch up different lures, little crankbaits, little rooster tails, not a rod that's too long, not a rod that's too short, not too flimsy, not too stiff. So I went ahead and had a uh, Joe's Custom Rods make me a uh, 6.3 medium light fast rod. I just, I was trying to find the right reel for it. I wanted a fast reel, but not a real big reel. So I found this Johnny Morris Carbon Light, 1500 size in a 6.2 to one gear ratio eight pound braid, six pound fluorocarbon leader. I'm gonna start out with a 132nd ounce jig head and a little Bobby Garland, and I think I can throw it, and then I'm gonna work my way up to some bigger lures, see how it feels, see if this is the rod that that I, that I think is perfect for this, or maybe it's a little too stiff, maybe, uh, I don't know. We're gonna test it out, and I really wanna know, because I'm get, really wanting to like really figure out what are the best situ wads and reels for certain situations, and uh, I think we're gonna have a fun day fishing. All right, that was a lot of talking and explaining. Let's get to it. I guarantee you there's gonna be a lot of fish caught. Dude, there we go. These sunfish are wearing it out, but they're little. Okay. 
Uh, okay, that's still wild. There's tiny little green sunfish. First fish to do. There we go. I saw him come out and get it. That's more I like it. That's kind of fish I'm wanting to get. Some of those bigger sunfish. Oh, that's a good bluegill. I thought that was a red breast, how colorful it was. Pretty bluegill there. That one swallowed it. I was watching my lure and it was gone. That feels good. There's a red breast. Okay. Green sunfish, red breast, and and a bluegill. So we got three sunfish species already. That's what's fun about getting in these little creek channels. Uh, it really gets out of the wind a lot of times. Yes. There we go. We're getting into them now. I was just looking at those little bit bigger ones. What is that? Oh, dude. I didn't know that this was in here. Stump knocker or spotted sunfish. This is crazy. Four species of sunfish already. So this is, this is a good start. We're getting in some good fish. Oh, that's a good hit. This is what I want to feel. How do these fish feel? Okay, it's a little bass. Oh, there's another one underneath it. These little guys put a pretty good fight. And you know what? That's a little spotted bass. So that's not even a large amount of spotted bass. Those guys fight a little harder. Yeah, spotted bass right there. That felt pretty good on the setup. There it is. <laughs> okay, this feels better. Is that, that's another stump knocker. That's crazy. I should've took a picture of all these fish. I can't believe how many different species there are in here. These guys are really, really solid, thick little fish. All right, it's time to change up. So I had this right here did really good. 130 seconds down jig head and a little Bobby Garland. So we got a three inch swim bait, Jean LaRue, Long John. Uh, it's really nice and kind of a small profile. I think I got a, like a 115 ounce jig head. Not a real big bait, but it's a great little size for a mixture of fish. And I think it will start start getting us some more bass, especially if I just swim it through, kind of. There we go. Oh, wow, look at that. Had no idea I was gonna catch a crappie today. This is. This could be a 10 species day. We just got a little black crappie. That's crazy. Everything comes up in here. Holy cow, that's big ones. Oh, it's a goodness. I don't know what that was. A big old beaver just swam by. Oh my. Startled me. Move it aggressively. Oh, there it is. That yeah, was a better hit. Let's see what this is. It's another spot. Hmm. I had a little bitty one. I think I've seen some little largemouth, but I'm surprised there's more spots in here. I don't mind them. I definitely like catching spots. They're fun. Especially if there ain't no smallmouth in a creek, spots are pretty good. Come on. Got it. What is that? Just a healthy red breast. Oh, nice. Dude, this this is a awesome. What a day. Man, the size of that thing. These guys are so healthy in here. Oh, yeah, that's good. Deep. Deeper hole and a bend. Should be some fish. Oh, 
Oh, you get it? Oh, that must have been what I missed earlier. Yeah, a little bass. Another spot. Oh, not a bad one. We're getting a little bigger. We are starting to upside. If we are already getting these, there's a couple little holes down here that might really have some good ones in it. If they're if these guys are already up in here. What's that? Is that a largey? Yep, we landed our first little large mouth. Oh yeah, that guy smoked it. Well, when I set the hook on these fish, it, this action of the rod really sets into them fast. So if, it, if I do come across some big fish, I think I will be able to hook them and handle them solidly. Sometimes I don't show the not so deep holes and I only show the holes where I catch fish, but that's why I like a lot of these creeks I go to, maybe I think people think they're bigger than they are, but look at the size of this. It's ankle deep, you know, for a while. There's little shoals, little shoals. It's not that big of a stream, but those little holes, those three and four foot deep holes can hold just a ton of fish. And then sometimes these places, they grow. Of course, down here, as we get close as it runs into a river, it's gonna have a big area. But even those, all these little holes we've already passed, they have a lot of fish in them. I'm gonna go with the same hook that I normally use for the Helgramite. And a lot of times when I'm doing this type of fishing, I'm not going, I'm not using really this bait. This is for a little bit bigger, stronger fish, but that's what I'm trying to see if this rod, if it, if it does good on it, or if it's not, will it set the hook? Is it not, you know, not good for this right here, but I got six pound leader line, should be plenty strong enough. I think the rod's strong enough. We'll see what happens. And I think some, some good fish are gonna hit this. That was a decent one. Okay, one came off. Let's see, it may have been just a weak hook set. Is that one? Oh, that's the same one, I think. Okay, okay, I like that. There we go, a little 12 incher. Good for a creek size. 11 maybe, 11, 12 inch. He has no trouble hitting that. Spotted bass. That's the kind of size I want to feel how it fights on this rod. And it's actually very easy. That is, that's a solid one there. That's more like it. He's a little thinner, but that's a good spotted bass. Well, he's very thin actually. But he, ooh, he looks rough. It's probably, uh, I bet they, I don't know. I think they come up in this creek to spawn. Not 100% sure. I've seen a lot of sunfish in here spawning. Maybe a bunch more, I don't know. It could be, you never know how many fish can be up in, oh, yeah, I felt better. I'm trying to, I'm setting the hook a little bit like more with my body and arms than I, cause the rod's a little shorter, I'm kinda, but I like it, I like how short this rod has been for this like tight cover. Oh, something's hitting at it. Wait, let go, little fish. There we go. Thought something a little bit bigger had picked it up. Are we gonna get another species? Check this out. Let's add rock bass to the list. I don't even know how many we got. I'm gonna go through and add it up. Rock bass, largemouth, spotted bass, green sunfish, uh, red breast, bluegill, crappie, stump knocker, spotted sunfish. We need two more species. Um, we got eight so far. Eight's pretty good. All right, we have made it down here to the end where at least this area through here kind of stays deep and connects to uh, the river around the bend. Oh, yes. Did he eat it? Yeah, he ate it. I saw that one. Nice. These guys are jumping today. Look how many fish there are in here. Nice little spot. I can't 
can't lose this many spotted bass in here. This little, I don't know, unusual, but that's a good one. That's what I wanted to see. Well, we hooked it easily, so uh, he uh, easily got hooked with that hook. Just a lot of spots in here. Oh. Oh, yeah. There's another one. They're biting it really soft. Just barely swimming with it. Oh, he came off. I was playing with him a little bit. It's like four fish right in front of me. Four bass. You gonna eat it? Swallow it. Too little. I got him. There's four of them and they were taking turns biting at it. This one decided to just go ahead and get it. I'm walking past a lot of fish this size. It's a little spot. They're nibbling on it and then some are nibbling, some are just curious, some are just swimming off. Another high flyer. These fish feel really good on this rod, actually. This is perfect. This is like, this is probably the perfect size fish to go for with this setup. Well, I don't know about that. But anyways, as far as like feeling it, wow. Now my lure went way up in the tree. He's just solid. Come on. Oh, no way, no, no way. Did that happen? Hold on, let's see what this is. Let's get it in. And I can't believe this happened. We topped it off with a small mouth. Oh my goodness, I didn't know. See, some of the creeks around the Chattanooga area, they're in a lower, it's different about, they're not full of small mouth. Everybody thinks they're gonna be full of small mouth, they're not. Some of them are really hard to get smallmouth out of. And you gotta go to the bigger water. This is connected to the big water. This guy was right on the big water. He wasn't up in the creek where if you go up to Knoxville, place like that, you're probably gonna find a lot more smallmouth or go up on the plateau. So that's really cool to catch. Nine species, we added a smallmouth to it. But um, so yeah, that's fun. Cool to find him in here. Oh, what is that? There's a big fish. Oh, I think it's a drum. Dude, what if I caught a drum? I dropped it right in front of him. Ah, uh, he's not, oh, <gasps> he turned to look at it. He turned to look at it. Come on. Oh my goodness, that would be such a good fight on this thing. There's a nice drum right there in front of me. Just kind of cruising. He's like, a, he's five or six pounds probably. There we go. And we got another red breast. Okay, well, it's time to make our way out of here. I've been going through a few different lures, kind of messing around. And I'm gonna work my way back out with a Joe's Flies, cause it's got the little stinger treble hook on the end. That way if I can get that one or two more species, maybe they're smaller. And um, it's a great multi-species type fishing lure. And let's go work our way out of here. Oh, this little thing is getting all the fish. I've had so many hits on it. I even have a good little bass. We have to start using these little things more. He hit it all the way on the main hook. A little spotted bass. Nice one. Oh, wow. I think he did it twice. Wait, 
What kind of fish is this? Oh, come here. Come here. That's a little smally. What's he doing up in here? That is a small mouth. Came through here, didn't catch him, but working my back way back up. I guess there's a couple in some of these creeks. That's the thing, like I was talking about in like the Chattanooga area, it's a weird, the valley like area it doesn't have a lot of small mouth. You have to go, a lot of the creeks have them, but you have to go to higher elevation. Uh, it's kind of cool to catch one out of here. I've never caught one out of this creek before. Now I've caught two. Ready here, we're only at that lower end, seem like. Dude, I'm getting hammered. And, dude, the fish have come alive on the way back up through here. Like, they seem to be more active than when I came through. That sun warm and everything probably is helping out. Another fat, chubby rock bass. Uh oh. 10 species! Shiner. Kind of forgot about that one. Boom, we got it. We got 10 species out of this creek. Not even going like, you know, micro fishing really. There's so many more species in here, which is what's crazy. There's so many fish in here. It's just uh, insane the population of what is in here. All right, it's time to give my final little take on this rod and reel. It's been a few days. I've used this in a kayak a couple times and I've caught lots of fish on it by now. Catching 10 species in that creek was awesome. And there was actually long ear in there and red, uh, red ear that I saw that I couldn't get to bite. Um, if I'd have stayed longer, maybe I could have got 12 species, but that's the only second time I've ever caught 10 species in one day. And it was fun, it's cool that it was all out of that one creek with lots of other fish in there. So that creek's just full of stuff. I love the length of this rod. Now, like I said, this was a, is a Joe's custom. So I had this rod custom made um, from uh, Joe's Custom Rods. He, um, you can get, get their stuff through Fishtails in Cleveland, Tennessee. There's not a lot of six threes out there. I've actually found one more that I, I need to go buy and try that I haven't I haven't used. But I love the six three size for exploration. It's easy to carry, especially this is a this is a nicer rod. It's a hundred forty dollar rod. So it's very lightweight and with higher quality stuff, it, it's a little stiffer than like cheaper quality. So a medium light is actually a little stiff for the kind of fishing I was doing. Now, when I got to, at the end there, there was a couple of good um, bass that you, I needed to set the hook on if I wanted to use the Helgramite. And that's the thing, this is, this is a great, if I'm wanting to use something where I'm really setting the hook, but for the most of the fishing I'm gonna do in that type of creek, a light would probably be good as long as it's a good quality and not too flimsy. You still, I still want something where I can at least set the hook a little bit. And I love the 6'3 size. The light to medium light, I'm gonna go back and forth. I, I need to get a light to try it out. And it, it may be one that, this one creek I know there's more bass, and this one creek I know there's more panfish. But a 6'3, a light, um, is probably gonna be what is gonna be a great multi-purpose, like all species. Now, with this, I had eight pound um, braid. I can't remember what kind it was and like a six pound leader. And I was throwing one 30 seconds ounce jig heads and little crappie lures like way far. It was like further than I can throw them on a four pound mono. So I, I kind of like that. I like the sensitivity of it. If I was gonna use like mono or fluorocarbon, I'd probably use six pound on this. Um, it'd probably be a great setup for throwing small lures still, but also throwing like almost bass lures. And it's a great all around. I love it on the kayak, how short it is. I can just grab it out and whip it out to uh, cast in little certain areas, or if I want to throw a small lure, I can you know throw it around, just have it with me. As far as this reel, this is the exact size reel I've been looking for. I've been looking for a, I want this is a six two to one, 1500 size reel. So it's not tiny and it's not real big. It fits this rod, I feel perfectly. It's the Johnny Morris um, Carbon Light 2.0. And it's a very lightweight, uh, very lightweight um, reel. Uh, with this combo every this thing out here weighs like nothing it's so lightweight and it's so sensitive so i'm, I'm really liking this reel it's the first time i've used that reel so i might try that a, a few more but i wanted a fast reel in a smaller setup where a lot of times when you go down to this size you have to go to a slower gear ratio and it works but i kind of just i've gotten used to that fast setup and i like just getting it back in fast sometimes or you know if i'm if i'm trying to catch up to a fish you can catch up to it real quick and keep tension on it Overall, I'm gonna be, I'm really happy with the setup. I'm gonna be using it a lot. Is it the perfect one for like an exploration type? 
pretty close to it. This is pretty close to a perfect for expression. Only thing I we'll have to do now is get it in a light action and pretty much same setup and try it out and see if I like that a little bit more. I don't know. It depends on it, everything. Everything goes gives give or take. If you use braid, everything's more sensitive and like stiffer. So let me recap again. Somebody just stopped asking for directions. Um, I do love the setup. I'm always searching for uh, here, especially the, as more efficient I get into and the more videos I'm trying to make and the more I, I want to be specific when I'm talking about stuff and be able to help people. I'm trying to find the perfect like rod and reel combos or what would I want to have made if I was having my own rod and reels made? What would be the perfect ones set up for certain situations? And there's probably never a right answer because it's always going to change and always going to fluctuate. You, some people have, uh, there's different types of braids. Some braids better than others. There's different types of fluorocarbon mono. Some people, have, their budget's different. If I had um, a mono on this, it'd probably be a really good setup because that mono's going to a little stretch. And um, if I use the braid on a light, it probably is going to be more sensitive because it's got, you know, it's, it's stiffer. So there's a lot of different variations. Some of the stuff I do get for free, but like none of this right here was, I, I uh, you know, I bought all this, you know, no sponsorships or anything like that. Because I, I do want to try out lots of different things. So I'll probably be doing lots of more trying it out and uh, give you my opinion on it. If you have questions or anything, I'll try to get to those and uh, just leave them in the comments. And um, anyways, hopefully this helps somebody out. Hope you enjoyed watching the video. I had a great time going to that creek and I plan to go back there. I've watched two or three videos recently from some people I follow and uh, they all were fishing a shad spawn out on the lake and some of them in a tournament and I think one of them was a fluke master and you won a tournament and um, it's it's just now June so this last few weeks I guess is like the time where the shad start to spawn and uh, it sounds awesome I don't think I've ever been out on the water when, and like seen a shad like spawning and been able to fish it but supposedly like the shad go crazy and the bass just come in and like you know gorge on them now I have come across this thing called a bug bite in creeks and it's this thing where creeks and uh, small streams or fish of all species will sit in these holes and wait for bugs to fall in and then just attack them. And it'll last about, oh, all summer. And I don't know if it's called a bug bite. I just made that up. But that's what fish do. They, they love eating bugs. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go to some of these uh, small creeks where fish just, they'll eat anything that falls in. And I got a couple lures to throw in, like little topwater bug lures. And I think they're going to smash them. All right, looks like a perfect day. It's hot, it's gonna be 90 degrees. Um, you can see how the leaves already grown, the grass is grown, the bugs are gonna be all over the place. I got a little bumble bug, and it just looks a little, little like a bee looking bug thing that is gonna fall in the water and fish are gonna just swarm to it like those shiners are. Ooh, oh, come on. Yeah, there it is. I missed the first one. Had a fish come and hit it. And the second guy came and hit it. And we got a shiner. I think the first one was a little bass, though. He came and kind of picked out really fast. One fish down. Yeah, there it is. There it is. That's a nice little bass. I saw him come up and look at it. I twitched it and he ate it. Stay on there. Stay on there, little guy. These things do have small hooks. That's why I'm using a, a light action fish hawk rod, actually. A four pound line, so I don't jerk real hard. Oh, just a little coosa bass. Ain't that little bee? These guys are, they're always trying to eat everything they can eat in here. All right, we're going to the, it's a black cricket. I think that's the color, or what is it called on that one? The black cricket, crick hopper. I need 
one of those fish had to commit to it. I couldn't really get that bass to uh, respond to it, but I threw back down where these sunfish were. Uh, fat little red breast, dude. I think it's very fat. He couldn't resist it. I'll just kind of roll in the little crick off really slow, and he just kind of came up and took his time. They came up and hit it. That's what's fun to watch them, especially in this clear water. You get to watch them react to the to the lure. So I'll throw the lure in there, and they come swarming up to it. They stop. They look at it. Then they like peck it, and sometimes they just hammer right away. I'm gonna hit another spot. Not a lot of room here, but get a few casts in, I think. Ah, the water is really low. Can't believe how low it is. We had some rain not too long ago. Oh, yep. Come on, come on. Yeah. Oh, how'd I miss that guy? Come back for it again. Where'd he go? I saw him for a second. I saw him, I saw this bass come out, hit it, and then it came off. Oh, and there's my first snake encounter. I kind of expected it to be a, a sooner. He's over here sitting in the water, probably waiting uh, for a bug or a fish himself. I think it's a, got a small head, probably a diamondback water snake, I think that's what they are. There's so many of those out here. Just sitting there doing his thing. Wow, that's a cool looking turtle. He had a weird head on him. Is that one of them musk turtles? I'll pick up a turtle. They get way up in there. I'm not brave enough to pick up a uh, snake for no reason, but I wish it had came out, but it was, they had a big old head on him that it wasn't used to, but it's cool to see him crawl along the bottom. It's cool to see these little waterfalls too. I didn't know there was like little drops to it. Kind of little mini, mini waterfalls. Great snake habitat area. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, I keep swiping at it. There we go. I gotta let these guys hook themselves. I think I'm moving it too fast. Got a bunch of hits that I'm not hooked up on. Wow, that's a nice red breast. Kind of gotta let them just go ahead and commit all the way to it. Really don't have to jerk. I'm trying to jerk and like set the hook on them, but I think that's why I missed several. They just gotta bite it. If they get it, they'll get hooked. That's a nice size, nice colorful creek fish, red breast. I don't know, you probably can't see them. There's all kinds of fish right through here. I don't know what those are. There's different ones, chubs and shiners, I think. I'm gonna just kind of get to the trees as far as I'm gonna go, but as I get up that way, there should be more fish. I was just getting out of the bank. I looked down and saw something move. Let's see if you can see it. Where's it at? Look at that, the crawdad in a crawdad hole. I usually never see them in the holes. Man, there's a bunch of sunfish through here that were just barely pecking at this lure. And um, I'm gonna try one more thing before I leave this section, just cause I know there's so much fish. I'm gonna try something else. Let me see if I have it in my truck. There we go. That's that fish. That's the fish that I was getting hits from. That's a bluegill. There's like a, a couple ledges over here I was watching the fish hide under. I think if I cast over it and let it sink down in there, they'll come out and hit it. Oh, 
Yeah, that dude hammered it. This is right where those all those fish were hanging out. I didn't realize they were bluegill. I'm not sure what other fish are in here. And I don't know where the bass are. So this right here is a new lure that Bobby Garland's coming out with. It's called a mayfly. It's basically, it's, you know, it's really similar to their, you know, Bobby Garland uh, was a baby shad, but stick some little wings on it, turn it into a little creature. And uh, when it's sinking in the water, I know these fish are gonna have a hard time turning it down. Oh, there's some fish right under this ledge right beside me to my left. Let me let the lure drop down in front of it. Yes! <laughs> that was cool. That was cool. I saw them. There's there's a ledge. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try to show it to you. But there's like there's a couple ledges through here. And there's like undercuts. The fish are going up underneath them. I dropped it right in front of it. Like kind of hopped it twice in this guy or this red breast. He just came out and inhaled it. Maybe not him. Yeah. Oh, I jerked too soon. That was a good fish. I set the hook like I was setting on a 10 pound bass. That was like, I thought he had it in his mouth though. I don't know why I jerked so hard. Oh, what? There's a big sunfish just devouring it. And I can't get him hooked. He bit it and spit it out. I have a pretty small hook on there, but. Should be no problem if I don't, if I can quit tangling up my line. That is really cool to see. I'm sitting here watching them just come. Thump. All right, give me another try. One more try. Nope, nope, no. Oh, oh. oh, got one. Oh, nice one. Oh, it's a nice red rest. There's a bunch of them right there. That, there was a different one that spit it out and then another one came and got it. Oh man, what a difference a little lure makes. They didn't want that. I mean, I caught a couple in the creek hopper, but they just, they weren't committing to it. And it may have been the color. I haven't had the greatest luck on that black, but dude, that thing is awesome. That's the kind of fish that have no trouble eating that little bait. And that's a, that's what they're looking for. Little mayflies, little bugs to come swimming through. Ooh, I do stick. That's where they're hiding out. They got the sun's out bright. It's like 1230. These guys are hanging up under these rocks and the water's low. I don't know why I keep twisting up my line. The water's really low, so they gotta hide somewhere. Stick this thing back on there. I got a 164th ounce jig head. It's a itty, Bobby Garland itty bit jig head. Let's see, what did I use? It's like a, I don't know if that's Cajun cricket. Ooh, it's like chartreuse and red specks. What was that one? Okay, here's that bed that I saw earlier. I should be able to drop this lure on it. Oh yeah, he's chasing away a lot of little fish. All, he's got fish all over his bed. He's the only bed I've seen up in here. He's just, I think really late. Right. Now get, I got little guys attacking it. Get off there, little guys. I need that big fish to hit it. And got him, got him. Yes, yes. That's a good red dress. Off the bed. Oh my, that's a stud. Big old mama, I guess. We'll get it back in there. Try to try to defend her, but I don't think she's gonna have much luck defending her bed because there's so many other fish trying to eat right now. That was cool to see. Man, that's a really good one. All right, get back in there. <laughs> oh, he's gonna go down in there for right now. We'll see if he goes back to his bed in a little bit.
<laughs> that was cool. I watched that guy come out of a tree. I cast it right on the edge of that tree. Comes out, grabs it, just tries to swim back into the tree with it. Little bluegill. These are the, came back to where I was throwing the crick hopper. Or, or I came here and was throwing the crick hopper. And all these fish would follow the crick hopper and they'd bite at it. Sometimes, um, you know, this right here, this bait lets them kind of really, you know, soft plastic lets them grab it a little bit better. Sometimes it works better, sometimes the other ones work better. Gotcha. And there's a green sunfish. Okay, I think we can say we completed our mission now. Little green sunfish, chubby as always. I get a, I got you. Man, there's a whole bunch of them right in front of me. Bluegill. They're all they're like stacked up on the edge of this like brush right here. It's like a foot deep. I watched a couple little ones bite at it, then I just watched this one like inhale the whole thing. So if the bugs are biting you, then the fish are biting the bugs. I don't know. But basically, I don't know if there's such a thing as a bug bite or, but there's like all these different bites that you get on. There's uh, all, you know, different hatches and all these things. And basically in creeks, there's always something hatching or getting blown out of trees, uh, out of the bushes. Later in the year, when the grass gets a little drier, that's when the grasshoppers really, you know, when they really go crazy, that's when it's really fun to throw, especially like little top water and little, little uh, creek hoppers, but they, they work now. And uh, the fish just want something to come in their zone and eat it. Just something that looks like something they would eat, a little creature, any kind of little creature. So I get asked a lot, like, um, I've done a few videos, like what's my favorite, you know, creek fishing lures or, you know, what do I use for creek fishing? And just go to, the, go to the crappie section, go to the bass section, go to whatever section until there's a creek section, which hopefully one day, um, and just look for any kind of little creature bait, you know, anything that looks, you know, one, two, three inches, you know, what are you going for? Are you going for bluegill and maybe, you know, maybe you're one inch or down and, you know, crappie lures work usually pretty good, but any kind of little thing that looks like a little creature, looks like something that's going to fall in the water. And I love uh, really light, light jig heads from 164th and maybe 132nd ounce. You know, if I, this today I was fishing like two foot of water, the deep holes, uh, something real light to drop in there really slow. They love to hit it on the fall. So a couple of them are hitting it on, uh, on the bottom over here. I was watching them. But yeah, basically the bug bite lasts um, all summer. As soon as the bugs are out, the fish are eating them and it's fun to get on them. Yeah, especially when the fish is more active and active. And today it got up to like 90. These fish were, these are fish are fired up. Some of them were just hammering it. Some had, uh, you know, some I had to kind of get down underneath the ledges because there was the bigger, the bigger ones are a little smarter. The little ones were just all over the place hammering fish. I don't know where the bass were. The, the bass they used to be in this creek. I only fished a small area of it. Kind of went through it with the crick hopper and i saw the fish though i came back with that little um the little bobby garland it's, it's it's more of a crappie lure the mayfly and dude the red breasts they were really uh stocky and it's fun to kind of get on those fish when it's easy to miss those i could be coming through here with only bass lures and not even catching those fish and um it's definitely easy to pass up some really fun fishing uh ultralight rod four pound line you know 164 ounce jig head and a tiny little lure or some of the little micro crankbaits or little micro lures and mess around with them, see how the fish act to them and then figure out what they want. Oh, is that a, oh, I thought that right there was my example, but that's not a bug, that's a, what is that? Oh, just a weed, but that's just how like little caterpillars and stuff fall in the water. And that's why the fish will hang out, you know, under these kind of things, you cast in right there. And it's fun to just see them come out of there. You're like, whoa, I didn't know that guy was in there. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Had a fun time. It only took me, you know, two, two and a half hours of messing around. Hit a couple spots. Ended up catching a bunch of fish. It's creek fishing time. This is what I love to do. And everybody knows you can go out in the country or out in the um, mountains, maybe in the wilderness. You find those little streams that are beautiful, awesome, and they're just fun to fish. But actually a lot of the best fishing is right in the middle of town. I'm right by side a busy highway in Chattanooga. I'm not gonna tell you exactly the creek because I don't know for sure if I'm supposed to be here, 
but I'm in between a bunch of businesses and maybe some homeless uh, camps and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm on the lookout, but this literally is some of the best fishing you can get. Some of these streams are just so full of fish and don't get a lot of pressure. There used to be a trail that I came down, um, but I haven't been here at least a year and a half and the trail is totally gone. I had to make my way through the weeds and it was thick. But now that I'm here, dude, this is a nice place. You don't even realize these spots are here in the middle of town half the time. This is gonna be fun. I got some light action rod. I got some little lures gonna be using. I think I'm gonna catch a bunch of stuff today. Starting out with a little crawl from the trout magnet. I think it's called Trout Slayer. And I got a brand new rod today. I had to buy it. Oh, wow, what a cast. I'll go over my setup in a little bit. Let's catch a few fish and then we'll talk setups and we'll see what, first we'll see what we catch. Oh, there's a bass right there, right in front of me. Oh, spooky moth. I think I had a chance to catch a ton of fish today. And there's one. And a lot of these are probably gonna be green sunfish. This is a perfect green sunfish stream. One, we're gonna count species too, so. That's one and about the third cast. Two. Next cast is that. It is spotted sunfish. That's funny how I catch them. It's funny the creeks that I catch these at, but I fish similar creeks that there's no spotted sunfish in. So it's fun for me to catch them. Let's go back up in there. Oh yeah. Red breast, three species, and I think that was three casts. Did I tell you I was gonna catch a bunch of fish today? <laughs> Come on, fish. You on there? Another spotted sunfish. Fish on. What we got? Creek chub. That's perfect. We're just getting everything today. That's wild. We have, I've already lost count of my, my species. Green sunfish, creek chub, spotted sunfish, red breast. All right, four. Let's keep adding to that. Oh, yeah, nice. There's our little bass. I just let it sit on the bottom. Oh my, that's an awesome little bass. I haven't left. This is a spot where I've walked in. I have not left yet. What was that five species? Chunky largemouth. Good, good. I was wondering if this little crawl was gonna get those large mouth to bite. I knew they're in here. Uh, caught them before, but every time you come to creek, it's different than before. Another large mouth. Next cast, littler one. Oh, he spit up something. He's been eating good. These fish have a lot of food in here. Little trout slayer is catching everything. Of course, there's no trout in this stream, it's too warm. Oh, I got a fish on and I'm trying to fix my uh, phone, move it out of a different pocket. Is that gonna be another one? It is. Bluegill. Nice bluegill. Look at green sunfish, spotted sunfish, chub, largemouth.
boom fish on what do we have green sunfish oh they hit it right when it hit the water green sunfish living under the bridge Oh, little bass right there. Oh, in the tree. All right, look, look, look at me. See ya. I am normal. I cast in trees and get tangled up. I know I cut those out most of the time, but but also I've gotten really good at just casting where I want to cast because I do this a ton. That makes a big difference. Oh. What is that? He came out and smoked it. Of course, the green sunfish. They hit so aggressively sometimes. Most of the time when they hit. Oh, okay. Some of these little spots like this, this is a little like, like a deeper area in the creek. And, oh, there we go, there we go. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Yes. <laughs> oh, that was cool. That was so cool to see. To the large mouth. I cast it over there, saw him come over here, and I just twitched it and he ate it. Well, had to eat that little crawl. Like I was saying, um, these little streams, they they run into bigger, obviously run into bigger streams, run into bigger streams, but it's just the right size. Oh, I got a fish and a tree, nope, came off. It's just the right size where it holds so much fish in a hole like this, got um, maybe Let's see, I'm knee deep, so a foot and a half of water, maybe two feet deep at the deepest spots. There's brush and debris. There could just be so many fish that live in here, just hundreds and hundreds of different fish that live in these areas. And there must be so much food for them to eat because they do well. Even little bass can get pretty good size in here. There's a little bass right there, some little fish little bitty ones now let's take a look this is we went through the deep spot now this is the size of the creek this is what's crazy like you can look at this creek and think there's no way there's fish in here it's it's shady and dark but you should be able to see it's it's not even ankle deep like some of these spots are not even ankle deep you think there's no way it could be full of fish no way it could be fish that you could actually catch and have fun catching and that all depends on the person what you enjoy catching but even, I see sometimes I'll see a stream like this size and I'll drive over and I'll be like, nah, it's not worth checking out. But then take a look at this up here. So you might see a little spot like this, got a little bit of good flow, it's pretty clear. And then there's a deep section that's, you know, a foot to two foot deep, but so much water through here all the way up uh 7500 yards maybe and there could be some deep pockets and these little areas you don't know where the fish are there could be all kinds of different fish in there oh there there we are what is that that is a red breast that i actually hooked uh in the mouth this time Oh, good fish. What is this? That's putting a little bend in this rod. <laughs> that feels fun. Oh, it's a nice red breast. Super nice. Colorful guy. I got it? I got one. Or did I snag him? Yes, long ear. We're checking off another species. The long ear in here are so colorful. Everything in these little clear strings seem to be more colorful. That's a little one. They have a, their mouth is not giant. Like uh, it's more like a bluegill size where it's a little bit smaller, but they're really aggressive. They'll hit a lot of different lures. 
Oh yeah, that guy hammered it. Nice red breast. Another thing about strains that I've learned is that sometimes the different species, sometimes they're all together, but sometimes it'll be like, this section through here is red breast. This section through here is bass. This section through here is uh, something else. They do like to have their own, you know, little areas that they keep to. Ooh, what is that? I got smoked it. A large mouth. There might be some other bad. I wonder if there's like spots or small mouth in here. It doesn't, there might be spots. I don't know about small mouth. Could be, I mean, it definitely could be in here. A lot of these streams in the Chattanooga lower, like the lower, or just streams that are in the lower valley areas and not in the up north Tennessee or in the mountains areas, most of them don't have uh, a population of smallmouth in there. Oh, there's a nice little bass right beside me, but I got a fish on. Oh, it's a solid bluegill. You might see, oh, there's a nice little bass that just went by. You might see little glimpses of stuff, but um, as I'm walking through here, I am, every catch that I make, almost every, every step, I am seeing different types of fish, whether it's suckers, um, a lot of hog sucker, northern hog suckers I see. There's another fish. Hey, there's a little bass. I've seen some little bass swim by. I've seen um, a lot of different sunfish. A lot of them are real small that I'm like kind of spooking out. I just, there's just so much stuff in here. It's, it's, I say that a lot when I go to some of these places, but some of these places, it's just unreal how many different little fish there are. I feel like I've caught a fish on every cast, like the last 10 casts. That's a solid bluegill. Or is it a red ear? It's got a little bit of orange behind his gill. I don't know, that one actually may be a little bit mixed with something. I got gotcha. you. Red breast, some of these red breasts are a little bit long and long and thinner looking. But look at the colors. Got like orange tips, got orange tips there. Ah. And then he wanted to go back, I guess. What do I have here? A tiny little green sunfish. He absolutely smoked that thing. Fishing doesn't have to be complicated and can be simple and can be really fun. And it doesn't have to be something if you don't want to go out for six, seven hours. How about, let's see how long we were out today. 35 minutes. It took me longer to get here than I, than I did fishing. And we're going to end the video right there because I just want to do a really quick, simple video. I want to test out this rod. So this is something new that a lot of people have been telling me to try. They make a lot of ultralight rods. They make bass rods. But they also make a lot of rods for like panfish and stuff. So I don't know why it took me so long to try it. But this is a TFO, Temple Fork um, Outfitters, I think it's what it's called, or Outdoors. I can't remember. But this is a trout panfish rod. 6'6", six, six, light action, fast. Um, real short handle. I paired it with, uh, this is the Johnny Morris um, reel. This rod, this, this rod, they're $99. The reel was $99. I got six pound braid and it's uh, it's called the J braid. Man, this stuff is so smooth feeling. I had some different braid on it and I changed this braid. I really love it. I can chuck this lure way up the creek and I got, it's a 164th ounce jig head, a little trout slayer. I believe that's what they're called. And I just got about a, six foot uh four pound mono just nothing expensive just some four pound mono this whole setup right here uh one little bag let me show you my bag real quick i just brought the real small bag and i didn't want to take a lot of lures i only i barely got anything in there but i had these um the little trout slayer kit and a little little kit like this is i haven't used them in a while but i love trout magnets and these and i figured these little crawls would get some of the bass to bite and it did it actually got everything to bite so a couple little things Maybe a, a pistol in there for being down here in urban areas, but I take one everywhere I go. I got a carry permit, so I'm gonna carry it anywhere it's legal. 
this creek that I'm in is a, it's a little creek. There's several, there's all kinds of creeks around here. You can, you can pick all kinds of places. This is right in between a bunch of businesses and parking lots. And um, the only people that really go through here most of the time are like homeless people. But there's, I mean, there's people that do come here and fish, I'm sure. But I'm not seeing any signs of any tracks, of anybody fishing, of anything. I basically got this whole little place to myself. Seven species in 35 minutes, one rod. I didn't even have to change the lure. Just a fun time. So I, uh, I, I've been wanting, to, I've been trying a lot of different lighter action stuff and ultra light to light. I love the light stuff just because I feel like I have a little more power. And this one, the being 6'6", six, six, um, this, this creek is pretty open. It's hard to see with the camera, but I mean, there's, there's a lot of overhanging trees, but I got enough room to cast it. I don't have to have anything too small. And with that 6'6", six, six, with this braid, with this setup, I'm casting that thing up there 30 feet in front of me before those fish know I'm in there and they are just slamming it. So thanks so much. I'll leave some of the information if I have it in the video description. And uh, just one of those little videos I like to sometimes do. Wasn't sure how it was gonna go. It went perfectly. Um, boom, came here, caught fish, and now um, I can do whatever I want to do. If I want to go catch more fish, um, I can try different lures. I can leave if I, if I, you know, that satisfied my fishing for the day. So whatever I want to do next, I can do next. But thanks so much for watching. Get out there and try some places. Be careful where you go. Get you some decent equipment. You don't have to. You don't even have to have stuff this expensive. That's two hundred dollars for this combo. You can get stuff that's twenty dollars and still catch fish. But it's a matter of just getting out there and putting a little effort into it. Thanks so much. I was driving over here to this creek and all of a sudden I just had this idea of like, how many fish can you catch in an hour? And I was gonna set a timer and go down this creek because I think there's gonna be a lot of little fish in there and I got some small lures that I like to use. So I just, I decided to look it up. Dude, Google, like Google it, look it up. The world record, there is a world record. It was set by a guy in like, uh, I forget where it was. He was fishing off a dock. Um, it was how many fish you could catch in 24 hours. I for, it's over 2,000, but he averaged 89 fish an hour. And it was bluegill on live bait, it looked, what it looked like from the picture and stuff. But then the next year he did it again in 24 hours and he averaged 110 fish an hour. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna get 110, but I'm gonna go over here, we're gonna keep track. I think it could be a lot. Also, I'm not sure how many species. So I'm going for, my goal is six species, 50 fish. I don't know if I can do that, but if you want to feel like taking a guess, put in the comments what you want to guess. Any kind of comments always helps these videos to kind of get more views and things. So I don't try to do a lot of things to get comments, but sometimes I like to do something fun. So I'm going to go grab a couple of my favorite lures, get them ready, and um, get a light rod, four pound line, probably go down this creek. But I've been wanting to explore it anyways a little bit. I haven't been here this year. And see my fish we can catch in an hour. Whew, water's a little cool. And here is the creek. It gets a little bit, well, it usually gets a little bit deeper downstream, but I'm not sure. The water's low in the lake, so this connects to the lake. So I'm hoping there's a lot of fish coming up in here. And I'm gonna have to move though, so that's one thing. All right, let me get my timer set. Okay, hopefully there's some fish right there. And start. One hour, and we're going. Okay, how many fish am I gonna catch? How many species? Oh, there's one. That's the kind of pace I need. <laughs> and, oh, green sunfish. Okay, I was hoping to get that one. Beautiful, oh man, we gotta take a, gotta take a little bit of a time to look at how beautiful this fish is. That's one down, all right. And, oh, something just jumped right there, what was that? Come on. I wasn't even sure if I was gonna get a green, oh, oh, I missed one. I could have put a little bit luler lure on there too. I forgot about that, but I like this size. I feel like it gets a lot of hits. 130 seconds down this jig head. Could have gone a little bit smaller, but this is pretty small, but there's two. There's two and two species. Boom. Two fish, two species. Uh, that is a shiner. Two fish, two species. 
sure I keep track of all that. I'm gonna not keep track of it very well, probably. Ah, missed that one. Oh, oh, missed that one. Come on, the little guys are hitting at it. We'll hit a few more, and then we're gonna move on to the next hole. All right, we're moving. You gotta do that to me, for Oh, there we go. Okay. And it's another shiner. Oh, that's probably why shiner. It's so weird when they bite sometimes. Two fish, three or two two species, three fish. I'll go species first, then fish. Two, three. Give me something out of there. We go. Red breast. Three species, four fish. Three, four. Three, four. All right, we're moving. We're moving. We're sitting right under those logs. There's one. Okay. Ah. Oh no, that didn't get in count. It came off. They're sitting right there. I see a whole bunch of them. Oh, I love them. Apparently, it's like a green sunfish. Okay, there may be a, maybe a bunch of them right there. That counts. That counts. I caught him and I held him. So three, five. Three species, five fish. Now I'm hung up. Costing me time. Costing me time. Oh, wow. Look at all those. Oh, there's a little bass right there, too. Okay. They haven't ran off yet. There's a, oh, wow. There's a bunch of good little fish right there. Wish I had a... I'm going to have to go underwater camera over here. Yup, I'll take it. <gasps> it's a new species. Bluegill. Four, six. Four species. Already, that's pretty good. Six fish. Let me fix this little guy. Four species, six fish. There's a lot of little fish sitting right there. Oh, a bass hit at it. Yes. Another bass hit it. Yes. We'll see what kind of bass this is. Well, we were at four six. This is a largemouth. Yep, largemouth. So five species, seven fish. I don't know what that is. Shiner. Five eight. Wow! Look at the colors on that one. Spawning colors five eight. There's so many right there. Sun, red breast. So five nine. Getting more than five might be tough. I don't really know what else would be here. Got it. Nice little, little ones hidden. Uh, is that another red breast? Yep. Five ten. I gotta. Let me get some more lures. Get them ready to go. That's a cool little spot right here. All these fish in here. Uh, I'm using the itty bit slab hunter. And another red breast. There is literally so many fish right here. It is amazing. Uh, five eleven. There's a bunch of little largemouth. Like I'm kind of excited to see what's going to go on downstream. I almost want to go for these largemouth. Like I don't know if they're going to bite. Oh, I mean, a, little, a couple of them might. Another bluegill. We've already got 11 fish. What's our timer? Uh, so we're 43. So we got like 17 minutes in. I'm probably on pace. I'm on pace for 50. There's 12. Is that something different? Nope, red breast. What that? Oh, yeah. What that bass that hit it? There's like several little bass. Get, what are you doing to me? How did this guy get tangled up all over the tree? There we go. Not a bad green sunfish. 
So five, 12 or thir th 13? There it is. 14. Ah, hotel. Oh, yes. Saw that one come get it. Okay, well, I, I just keep biting, so I gotta stay here. There is probably, probably two or three, probably more than that, probably three or four hundred little fish in here. Like, if you count the little ones that are 16, if you count the little ones that are like uh, inch long, that are like hiding up under the trees and stuff right there, and then all the ones I can see, there's just so many. 17, I believe. It's a uh, blue goof. 18, I was reeling it in, and he just got it. Well, it kind of stopped biting him, so I don't want to take too much longer. Let's go down to that next hole. If I can get over there somehow, what's the best way? Up through this over here. 18, that's where we're at. Ooh, nice beaver dam, still there from last year. Oh, that's a good bass, I just spooked it off. Oh, I got a fish though. 19. Yeah. I saw something eat that. 20. We are doing good. I'd like to get a couple more species if I could find them. Got a fish on. 21. Mmm. Okay, they're right there on that beaver dam. 22. Yep. I just gotta let it sink right there. Oh, it's a little bass. Is it anything just a largemouth? Looks like a little largemouth. Number 23 is a little bitty large. Can't call him a largey. I mean, how you call that fish a largey? 23. Bigger red breast. Yep. 24. Got it. 25. Halfway there. All right, we're going to fly through these next ones. Oh, those are a little large mouths, the decent ones. If I had a little bit bigger lure, they probably would hit it. What is that? Red breast, 26. Oh, there's a decent, oh, look at that, look at that. Dude, there's a good little bass, a good sized bass. He's chasing my bluegill. Eat it, eat it, eat it. I want to see him eat it. Oh, I don't know if you can see it or not. He's right there looking at my bluegill. Or the red breast. Oh, I, oh, come on. Just try to eat it. Either, I don't know if he's big enough or not, but that's a good bass. Oh, my goodness. That's like, oh, a nice bluegill. That bluegill's a little bigger than I thought. It's like a pound and a half, two pound largemouth. He was, he was all over that. 27. I wonder if he'll eat this lure. Oh, there's a couple of them. Dude, there's bass in here. Uh, he's gonna sidetrack me from my, from my mission. There's some good bass in here. Oh my goodness, this is killing me. I gotta stay focused, stay focused. Good red breast, goodness. He's fighting hard. Oh, pretty one. I don't even remember, I think we're at 20, Eight, maybe wrong. Ooh, good bluegill. And we're getting bigger, uh, bigger fish down here. Not as many, but they got bigger fast. Uh, I'm coming back with bass lures. I don't, and a little bit heavy rod. I don't think this is. This could get them, but um, oh, there's some good ones in there, dude. I don't even know if they'll. They're they're like that area where I don't know if they're gonna bite. But they definitely don't want a small bait. There is several good bass hanging out under that tree right there. There we go. Is that, I think that's 30. Kind of, all right, you're gonna have to stay tuned and see if I make a video or not catching them. Cause I'm gonna go back to my truck. Oh yeah. And get a different rod and come back I don't know what they want to hit, but I'm going to get some, at least some bigger lures that 
might make them commit because there's several at least one or two of them on a bite oh, a little bit large enough right in front of me it's cool oh wow I walked by those logs put all kinds of fish out of it Thirty-two. Seventeen minutes left, and I guess you can go ahead and call me a quitter. <laughs> I'm stopping. I can't do it. I can't even fish a whole hour after those little ones because it kind of defeats the purpose of it. I mean, I, it was fun to catch them for a while, but I want to explore more and more. Now I want to go catch some of those bass and keep waiting further, but I know the bites are going to get slower. So uh, I'm done. That was it. I think I caught 32 and 40, so about 43 minutes. Pretty cool. It's crazy how many fish that you can catch in here in these little areas. And these, this, this little, this creek here, um, really clean water. It's spring fed, um, not too far up there. And you know, obviously most creeks come out of the water, uh, out of the ground anyways, but it's, it stays real clear, rocky bottom, and it feeds into the lake, not very far down, or actually like a river that runs into the lake. So lots of fish come up in here um, when they're young or to spawn. And, there's a bunch of bass down there, so I'm gonna have to go do a video going for those bass. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna stick this camera, if I can mount it, underneath over here, under this one deep hole. And I think we're gonna see all kinds of fish and see if we see any different species. This, I think it's gonna be cool. So I'm gonna end the video putting it underwater. I think it's gonna be pretty interesting. I bet a lot of fish will come up to the camera once I leave. I'm gonna let it go, put it under, go up to my truck, get my other gear, come back down and get it back. But I think, uh, I think we'll get some pretty cool sights.